name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We celebrate the faithfulness, as it said in the song, glorious in his faithfulness. In Christ's emphasis on the Eucharist, our final week of the Bread of Life discourse, he invites us to really place our choice in him, our confidence in him, the love that he has for us, and the grace he desires to share with us. We lift up our prayers and intentions. Call to mind those most in need of our prayers, those who have asked us in a particular way for our prayers. And brothers and sisters, we take a moment as we call to mind our sins, prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders and their leaders, their judges and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The gods, your fathers, served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose country you are now dwelling. 
As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the services of our God. For it was the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord has eyes for the just and ears for their cry. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Thanks and see the goodness of the Lord. Many are the troubles of the just one, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. He watches over all his bones, not one of them shall be broken. Thanks and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, live in love as Christ loved us. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church, and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me.
unless it is granted him by my father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As a kid, one of the things that was very popular, and still I'd say even more so popular today, is the world of video games. Video games have expanded and expanded more and more and more. That they're somewhere where you can find an easy challenge, or I should say not necessarily always easy. You can find a real challenge, you can find competition, you can explore new worlds, all these different things, and do so from the convenience of your own house, <laughs> without having to take the risk, you know, of racing cars or whatever it may be, fighting, combat, whatever types of games it might be. That I think for us, there's something that's appealing because, again, they let us go into those other worlds, but without the risk that, that might entail. We can save the game. If it doesn't work out, we can try again. Uh, we can control the characters in the game. That you know, We press the button and they respond. It, they never just kind of get lazy or get distracted or get frustrated and won't do you know, what the controller says. That there may be technical problems, but as long as everything's working, you know, it does what we want it to do. It's different from real life. It's different from what we encounter in this world. That in our life, it's not as easy and simple. We have moments where we really have to make choices. We can't just press save and go back and you know, try something if that doesn't work out. We likewise uh, contend in our own life with our own weaknesses. That we're not just a video game character that is automatically controlled. That we have our habits, we have our strengths, we have our weaknesses, we have you know, all these different things that factor in. That life is a gradual process of growth. That it's not an easy transformation, where it's not something that's as simple as pressing the right button. That this can be challenging for us. It's something that can cause us to kind of shy away. And I think we see that, that in our world we have more and more that temptation to want to try to live in a world of our own creation. We want to try to create kind of an environment where we can have things the way we want them, but not maybe to contend with those other aspects of life. But that if we don't confront our real self, we can't really grow. We can only have the illusion of growth. That if we kind of avoid those challenges or those moments of decision, it's not that we become better or greater in a sense, but that we just simply uh, can kind of hide away from, from those moments of growth. And the pain or the difficulties that those can entail, you know, make us understand, I think, and have sympathy towards why that temptation is powerful. But that there's something greater than just kind of hiding. There's that real growth and transformation. Those moments of real decision. That the Greek word of decision uh, strikes us as differently. The Greek word for decision is crisis. <laughs> a crisis. So for us, we think of a crisis as something really to be avoided if at all possible. That's because of the reality of how difficult decisions can be. That that word's taken on that connotation. But again, those moments can also be great moments of grace. That we see a crisis in the, a moment of crisis in the gospel. That Jesus here has finished his bread of life discourse. To use another Greek word, uh, he's gone from not just speaking of himself in that general sense as the bread of life, of eating, you know, of eating his, his uh, what we call holy communion. He speaks, you know, my flesh is true food, my blood is true drink. That he doesn't just speak of that using the simple Greek word as he does in the beginning, estio. But at the end of the gospel of this section, he starts to use the Greek word trogo, which is more like na. It's a very um, concrete word that not just the abstract concept of receiving, but of literal eating. And that this, many of the those listening can no longer take. They were first angry when he started, or they were first confused, maybe is the better word, when he started to speak of himself as the bread that came down from heaven. You know, how can that be? That then they begin to murmur you know, as he speaks of in eating, trogo, using that very strong Greek term. Uh, and they get to this point where it says, the saying is hard, who can accept it? 
and many of them return to their former way of life and no longer accompany him. So Jesus doesn't try to kind of press the reset button to go back to a former one and say, oh no, sorry, I didn't mean to say that, or I didn't, you know, he doesn't kind of diminish what he says, but in fact he turns to the disciples, the twelve apostles, saying to them, do you also want to leave? In other words, that this is a real moment of decision, that he wants them to accept him uh, in this fullness of what he's teaching them, teaching about, you know, the the full reality of what he means by describing himself as the new man, as the bread of life, again, whose flesh is true food. And he says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you do not have life within you. That it's a moment of decision that Peter gives this response. Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. In other words, that yes, it is difficult. It's not that maybe they haven't thought about it, but that you know, he's convinced. That here's someone who actually can respond to the promise he makes. That the crisis, the decision that he calls them to make, is with one who has shown himself to be trustworthy. You know, we might also see that, that great phrase from Joshua in the first reading. He says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That emphasis that he's placing that trust in him. That we see throughout history, you know, we've looked in these last weeks of the Bread of Life discourse at the Eucharist. So looking first at its preparation of the Old Testament, then looking at what Jesus himself does in the New Testament, looking at the writing of the early church, seeing even those first generations of Christians emphasizing the Eucharist, looking then at Mary as a model of how we can really enter in and receive with great fruitfulness ourselves, last week with the Assumption. That we see that what happens over time is not that uh, we begin, the church begins to put more and more stock in the Eucharist and make it into something that it was not in the early church, but it's quite the opposite. That our belief in the true presence is what is clear in the early church, and that the different uh, kind of attempts to diminish it are what happened later in time. That over time there was a doubt about the power that Christ really uh, places in the sacrament. That that doubt is translated into many different ways of wanting to diminish the real uh, truth of Christ being here with us. The truth of his power to save us. Again, thinking of that kind of virtual temptation that we have. That we want to take Jesus, <laughs> take the challenge of Jesus, and make him into something more manageable. Making his words into something that we can kind of control and we can kind of keep um, in our own mind. But a Jesus that's just of our own creation doesn't have the power to elevate ourselves, doesn't have a chance to really save us. That we become lost, left to just our own self. Again, knowing our own self, if we've really encountered ourself, I think we want something more than just our own strength to face the world. We want something than just our own uh, battle, interior battle, to be uh, left to the strength of our will. That is, it's a, a losing uh, proposition, so to speak. That Christ invites us to put real trust in Him. You know, in the real world where there's real decisions and real consequences to make him a real priority manifested in our way of life and that he promises that in that we don't lose anything that in saying that yes to him we don't lose anything that makes life truly good that makes us truly happy and fulfilled in fact he invites that we will find something deeper so again it's that slow and gradual transformation in many cases that it's that lifelong process of letting christ live in us more and more fully, to be more and more full and radiant with the presence of Christ. It's not easy, it's not uh, a, a flip of a switch, but it's something that is really powerful. You know, Christ speaking of the love of Christ as the image, as with the image of the, the wedding vows in the second reading. It says, this is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ in the church. That Christ, you know, lives fully, you know, those, those wedding vows, you know, on the cross to give himself to us in good times and in bad, in sickness and health, you know, till, you know, to the end of our life and beyond the end of our life. That this is something that is manifest in this sacrament. Again, that moment of crisis of decision. Who will we serve? Will we continue to walk with Christ? Will we go off with our, maybe just our own kind of mental reduction of Christ? Will we allow him to really uh, be the Lord of our life? To accept that power that he he claims a power that he doesn't use to 
control or to bind, but instead to set free, to elevate. But one that does require us to um, let go in a certain sense. This is kind of, again, where all of these weeks have led. That this series of five weeks going through the gospel, just chapter six uh, of John's gospel, you know, leads us to this point of real crisis and decision. But in that moment, a place to really encounter God and the power of transformation. drawn uh, largely from the early church baptismal formula, formula, that statement of dedication to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So in progressing our creed, we ask the Lord to renew within us that dedication to Him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born the Father before all ages, God from God, right from right, to your God from your God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us to him for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was his heart of the Virgin Mary, and he came in. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Spirit of confidence, let us raise now our prayers and petition. For the disciples of Jesus, persecuted today for their beliefs, that they be strong in faith and steadfast in compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For nations crushed by debt, that the community of nations help restore them to financial health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who have suffered loss from acts of violence and for a world free from terror and war, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the sick, especially those in constant agony, that they receive effective pain relief and know God's closeness, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For the members of this community, that they respect one another's differences and unite in love, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all the intentions written in our parish book, for those on our cancer quilt, for those who have served in the military, living and deceased, for vocations to the ordained and consecrated life, and for Doug Rocky, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the protection and purification of the Church here and throughout the world, let us pray the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and humbly pray, and do thou, Prince and Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty God, we lift up our prayers and intentions. We ask that you hear and answer them according to your holy will. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The offertory is number 13.
acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands. Praise the glory of his name. For our good and good all is the Holy Church. O Lord, who gained yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <laughs> So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your life, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Malachi, St. Elizabeth of Hungary, and with all the saints and his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Daniel our Bishop, Louis's brother Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be the tradition of her by her. I only say the word of my soul. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy. 
and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So it was a big week, so we had our first couple days of school, so things are going well. We are still looking for a full-time aid position for St. Malachi School, so if you know anyone that may be interested, you can contact the office there. We have, uh, as I mentioned, come to the end of these cycle of readings on John chapter 6. So what's next? Well, next weekend we'll actually do our Stewardship Sunday. So it includes Saturday night as well. But we'll have Saturday night and Sunday, an opportunity to kind of talk a little bit of a State of the Union address of kind of how the parish did this past year. And then kind of what are our plans and what are we working on this new year? What are the different opportunities to kind of uh, put our yes to the Lord into practice in different uh, ways to grow, uh, a lot of different things. So I look forward to that next week, sharing again a lot more practically about what we'll be doing this new semester. It's a good time also uh, to reach out to others you may know that may be interested in getting involved with something. So we kind of have our four different levels of participation that they can get involved with. The most full is our, our Sunday, our weekend uh, services. Then we have our weekday masses. So those are open with more spacing, a little bit more um, kind of control, so to speak, in that way. Uh, they are changing, so with school starting, um, our school masses are not open to general parish, so our daily masses are 6 p.m. here on Tuesday, 7.15 Wednesday and Thursday at St. Malachi, and then noon at St. Malachi. We have a couple outdoor services, so on Sunday morning at 10, or sorry, at 11.15, we have outdoor confessions at St. Malachi, so Sunday morning outdoor confessions, then Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock, we have outdoor communion here at St. Elizabeth. And then our, our kind of third, fourth level, we also have our online uh, available. So just to reach out to others, like I said, next week we'll really be talking about what's going on this year. So a good time to kind of check in with people and to kind of see where they may be and how they might get involved you know, in one of the different ways. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 432, Amazing Grace. <laughs> 